Hello everyone. I'm Carmel. I'm a technical account manager at Red Hat. And uh, this is a talk I actually done before on Linux Day in uh, Milan. It's very similar to that one. And today I want to talk about supply chain security, explain what the supply chain is in a software environment, a software ecosystem, an IT ecosystem, and how Tekton can help us. So have you attended uh, uh, yesterday talk about uh, cloud, end-to-end uh, -end, uh, ecosystem, etc. with Tekton? No? That's great, because part of the demo is very similar. So <laughs> no one is going to see the same thing. That's great. So uh, what I want to talk today again is what's really a supply chain, because I feel like supply chain these days are being really hyped a lot. Security in supply chains, etc. So I want to start from the top and then understand what we can do in Kubernetes with it. How we can make secure the components of a supply chain and what can, be, what, what can we do to make it more secure, to be safe in our development uh, life cycle. And uh, what can we do with Tekton with it? So do you know Tekton? I think all of you do know Tekton. I'm a bit nervous because I think some of you work on Tekton. Are you a contributor, some of you? Uh, raise your hand if you're a contributor to Tekton. That's great. I feel more less pressure. That's great. Thank you. And uh, finally, I will show a demo. Um, and you can also do it. It's actually also documented in part uh, in the OpenShift documentation. So you can try it out in your laptop. And uh, OK, so what's really a uh, supply chain? Supply chain in, in, uh, in software uh, uh, ecosystem in IT, in IT context is everything that, touch, that touches your software and your software life cycle de de development life cycle. And uh, it includes everything from the infrastructure where your software is going to be deployed, its dependencies it's, uh, is uh, one of the most important things, and of course the vulnerabilities, which is actually the most important thing in my opinion. And uh, this is... Uh, very different from what we call supply chains in other contexts because uh, yes we all have vulnerabilities in every context but in uh, regarding uh, software it's very very connected to the dependencies we use and we don't see when we deploy some kind of software or we just you know try to run it locally and uh, one example that all of you i'm sure know it's uh, log4j uh, log4j is very interesting because uh, a few years ago this is a, an old example. Actually, I tried to talk about a very recent example, but uh, I couldn't find a correct context for XZ or any other hot news. So I'm going to talk again, again about, about log4j. Uh, do you know log4j? These dependencies for logging uh, in Java. Do you know what happened a few years ago? So they found this uh, very huge vulnerability, which makes uh, everything in your system, your systems, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, your, C your, uh, your pass, your platform, your infrastructure can suffer of a uh, very huge uh, secure, uh, mm, and secure uh, vulnerability. And uh, the interesting thing about this is that uh, I checked this data like six years ago. There was a report that showed how at least a third of the log4j deployed in uh, enterprise systems are still using the old version, the, the impacted version, even though all of us, uh, all, all of us read the uh, news uh, you know, on Reddit about this vulnerability, this, this still hasn't been fixed. And uh, this is mostly because I think uh, uh, people don't know that uh, this is still something that you need to update to fix. People don't know how to take care of their uh, development, development life cycle. They download some library from Java without checking uh, that it's actually using uh, log4j. And of course, they don't even check which version log4j it still depends on. And uh, what can usually do in this case uh, might be to go upstream, check uh, why it's using the dependency, check if you can actually help them with a pull request or a merge request to use a fixed version of the same library, etc. This happens with log4j, but this happens also for a lot of other dependencies. Um, continuing. So let's talk a, a bit about uh, Kubernetes and Tekton. Uh, I think uh, all of you know at least a bit what, what Kubernetes and Tekton are. And Tekton is uh, a bit confused, actually. There is a bit of confusion about Tekton. Tekton is not a single tool. Tekton is uh, a toolset 
uh, fundamentally used for CI/CD, but also for maintaining your CI/CD, not just continuous in integration and, de and deployment or um, and, and deployment, but also to um, to se to secure the your uh, supply chain uh, with check on signature. Uh, we will talk about it later, and uh, to make. Uh, session of what your CCD, you can uh, easily check uh, every component and artifact in your CCD thanks to this tool set. And what I want to focus uh, today is uh, one uh, a specific tool of Tecton, which is called Tecton Chains, which was uh, released uh, a few years ago now. It's, um, I, I don't know why, I'm not sure why this is, uh, this is not very well known compared to Tecton uh, CICD for itself. And uh, also, it's a bit more difficult to check who's, who is really using CI, uh, Tecton Chains because it automatically comes with Tecton Operator on many Kubernetes distro like OpenShift, but you can really check the subscription for this. But I don't think it's been pushed enough, even though it's really useful in my opinion. These are some of the features for uh, Tecton Chains, which are signing task runs and tasks, uh, which are object com the components. Uh, usually for uh, Tecton, uh, Tecton CI/CD, and you can also use uh, attestation formats for images. And uh, I think one of the most uh, significant features for Tecton Chains is actually storing secrets in Kubernetes uh, uh, as part of including uh, in secrets of Kubernetes signatures for real images and uh, with the use of OCI repository, and which is mostly what we, be, uh, we will focus during the demo. And uh, what, how secure is Tecton Chains now? I want to, to explain a bit uh, what Salsa is. This um, protocol of security uh, separated in levels. And uh, with Tecton Chains, uh, we actually come uh, a few years ago to arrive to level two. And I think the most significant step was to assert the silent prov provenance for images. We will, we will show this during the demo. But yes, Salsa is about this level of security. For example, level one is just using unsigned provenance, which is the lowest level, the most unsecure one. Then with level two, we start to build resistance in our supply chain with, uh, uh, again, provenance and signature for images. And then uh, we will have level three. That is going to be a bit difficult to have in Tecton, but I think uh, contributors of stream are working on it. And the most uh, difficult step will be, of course, adding uh, a robust non-falsifiable provenance because if you're going to notice in the demo, this can be still uh, be tampered with. If your registry is not secure enough, uh, if all your components are not secure enough, this might be tampered still. And of course, the fourth level, the highest one, uh, is a two-party review with more components. This is going to be even more harder to, to have uh, at the end of the day because uh, it will need to a uh, complete certification of uh, integration between multiple components, all uh, integrated with your <laughs> uh, software uh, de development lifecycle. So do you have any questions for now? I think I've been a bit too fast. I timed this differently, but it's fine. We're going to move to the demo now. And the demo, we're going to use OpenShift. I will explain again this later. But we're going to use uh, a Kubernetes distro that I think all of you know, because you also have a t-shirt with it. So it's going to be OpenShift. And we're going to be uh, also the operator for Tecton in OpenShift, OpenShift pipelines, which will also include automatically Tecton chains. And what we're going to do uh, with it is going to be run, uh, first of all, generate a couple of key with cosine. Do you know cosine? It's basically a, a tool to, for asynchronous, uh, for, asynchronous uh, for creating asynchronous keys. So we're going to store uh, up the private key with a secret on Kubernetes in OpenShift. And uh, we're going to have locally the public key to verify uh, the image later. Uh, about this image, we're going to pull uh, a simple Fedora image from Quay, uh, from the Fedora registry. And we're going to push to a uh, local personal Quay registry. And from there, uh, we're going to check on the signature for this image again and the provenance and all the metadata signed with it. In the meanwhile, mean, well, Tecton will also sign the image and et cetera. OK, let me swap to the recording. I'm going to say, uh, th this recording, uh, uh, we worked on this with a colleague that cannot be here today. Uh, if Valerio is watching, I'm going to say hi to Valerio. 
Uh, but yes, you're going to notice that the host uh, is yours when, uh, when I'm going to open the terminal. And uh, sorry, but he couldn't present with me this time. So as you see, this is a normal OpenShift, OpenShift 413 environment. We're going to install, first of all, the operator. And I think we can skip this part because it's very boring. We're just going to install uh, the Tekton operator called the OpenShift pipelines, which include all the suit for Tekton, including Tekton CICD, of course, but also Tekton chains. Yeah, these are the components uh, in it. And we deploy it. Feel free to interrupt. This demo might be slow sometimes. So if you have questions, if you have doubts about uh, the process, please uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, boring stuff. OK. Now it created the namespace, but we're still going to wait for the pods to come up. This is why I registered, I registered the, the, I recorded the, the demo, because uh, it's a bit long on boring parts. That was actually a snap of our uh, <laughs> documents with all the steps to remember for our registry. And I think the real demo is going to start now. I think it's we're going to check again Yeah, on the pods. Yeah, exactly. All right. So we logged to with API with uh, OpenShift API to our console that we showed before, where we installed the operator, and now we're gonna create a project on it. And first of all, as I was saying before, we're going to use Cosine to generate a pair of asynchronous keys. And uh, with the use of Cosine, this is very well uh, integrated with Kubernetes because you can, uh, when you generate the key, we can automatically store the private key in a secret inside Kubernetes. As it says, you successfully created the secret, etc. So we already have uh, the private key inside. Now I think we're going to do some tweaking with uh, Tekton, because we need to enable the signature for Tekton chains. Yeah, what we're doing here is uh, basically uh, setting a format for our artifacts, uh, which is based on uh, salsa level for Tekton. And of course, uh, we are going to use OC uh, OC the OCI repository to store the image. And transparency is another label to see better the, uh, later the metadata for the, our image. OK. What we're doing now is creating the namespace, as I was saying before. We're saving some variables to simplify the comments later. We just saved in some variables the registry we're going to use for this. And basically, now we're creating a secret uh, with our uh, config uh, pull secret, with our pull secret manifest, uh, with our pull secret key to have the permission to push uh, the image to our local registry. Nothing fancy. Uh, for the recent version uh, uh, of, um, of the Canico task we're going to run later, actually, we will need to modify the name of the, um, of the configuration. Luckily, it's not going to be docker config JSON anymore. It's just going to be config.json. This is something that bothered me for a whole day because it didn't work because of this after an update. Yeah, now it's showing just the key we pushed. These are our credentials for uh, Quay. All right. And this is uh, the manifest for the task we're going to run with uh, Tekton uh, CI/CD. It's a very simple Canico task. We're going to use Canico to pull a Fedora image and then push it again to our registry. Meanwhile, uh, Tekton will assign the image. And uh, later, we will check the provenance for it, too. Not in fancy, actually.
Actually, don't trust the description too much because uh, this Kaniko task you can easily find it on GitHub. If you just <laughs> it's like the only Kaniko ma manifest you will see complete around on the internet, but we modified it a bit to pull uh, Fedora. Yeah, exactly. Pull in Fedora. And then again, building and push, pushing to our registry, etc. So we're going to apply this manifest for this task to in our to our to our cluster, so we can use it with our operator. And now we created a task. Now we should be able to see it with both uh, Office Shift Cli and Tecton Cli. Yes, exactly. Tecton Cli is actually pretty cool for this kind of stuff. It gives more information. You can see like a description, I think, some kind of some more. There is also you just see these uh, three columns right now, but you you might have more information just on a task, but also for the task run and the other object. And I think now we're gonna run the task. Yeah, as you can see, we're starting the task we just push, we just apply, uh, we just apply manifest of, and uh, we're using uh, the config JSON we pushed before in the secret called Quay, and we're using the Canico chains task. So this task will do some simple stuff, as I said. First of all, it's gonna pull Fedora. He created a task run, which is actually uh, another object in Kubernetes. Yeah, it pulled in the first step the, um, the image Fedora, and the latter step it pushed it. What you didn't see is the signature and the stuff the Tecton Chains did. But now let's jump in Quay. This is not a private registry, it's just uh, a registry uh, hosted in the Quay. Okay. It's going to be the last one. So you will see the tag used. It's the same uh, as saved before, um, and that's the actual uh, the actual image. While the digest above, the shard digest, it's uh, the a testament of, uh, uh, for the for the image, which is going to contain the comp contain the metadata we will check later. Yeah, the station. And actually, you're not going to see this now. I don't think it's going to show it now. But Quay we will do also its own security scan that you can trust. It's queued now. You will see for the other images we tried before that uh, it was going to do some vulnerability uh, basic checks on the image and on the, on, the, on the digest. This can also be checked with text and chains separately. Now we're just having a variable the digest for this image. We're just parsing uh, the we're just parsing the task run. We just run where it's going to be all the results, and with EJQ we're just extracting uh, extracting the e the digest so to use uh, um, so to capture this. And after this, we will use this same digest to verify with the public key or kill sign the signature for this image. This is going to be the simplest step, actually. It's something that also the colleagues showed yesterday in the demo for the cloud. It's very, it's very useful for your security, your uh, development life cycle, but it's also very easy to do. And uh, as you can see, it's just a simple command of cosine to match the, DJ, the digest to uh, get the, um, the signature for the, for the say, the image uh, with the tag used. It's just the, di the shard digest with our public key. As you say, the cosine is saying that the claims were validated, but also, of course, there is a space log uh, enabled at the start for, uh, with uh, Tecton. And of course, the signature uh, were uh, verified against the public key. And you can see uh, the identity we will check again later for this digest. Oh, 
Okay, this was important uh, because this time we're not checking for the signature anymore, but for the provenance with the attestation we saw before uh, on Quay. And again, uh, cosine claims validated, uh, present, uh, uh, presence of the transparency log, but of course uh, the signature verified against the specific public key, but this time for the provenance. This is actually the period of the provenance we care about. It's called And you don't care about C at all, but you will care about the last six things that which we again the signature look can match again with what we checked before. Um, the demo is very uh, verbose. There is a lot of things we're doing manually. I in a real case scenario, I didn't say this before, but it shouldn't be done this way. You shouldn't check manually all these steps for every dependency, of course. What you will do is build, again, another Tecton uh, CI, uh, not te Tecton uh, task, and uh, you will uh, automatically do all these steps to verify before, for example, integrating uh, uh, integrating some dependency in your, uh, your life cycle, or again, before deployment, just to be sure. So it will be even easier to integrate with all. And, uh, what you will see in the final GUI for OpenShift console, for example, just a couple of green checks we're not seeing now. Again, we're using another tool. This is Recall. Recall is mostly used, it's uh, part of the SIG store as uh, the same as Cosign, and it's used to check metadata. And what we're seeing now, it's all the metadata, including for, uh, in, uh, from, our, uh, from the shady just for our image. And uh, we're going to see at the, in, uh, the provenance uh, and the signature for our image, just to be sure. And this is just the shot. This is going to be around. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is what I was talking about. I don't know why I'm going to look there and not here, which will be easy from my neck. But uh, yeah, basically, what we're going to check here is uh, all the information uh, present in attestation we see before we saw before on Quay. We're going to see, of course, uh, what we've been uh, deployed, uh, what's the provenance uh, uh, for the salsa, uh, the salsa protocol we're using, because of course there are multiple uh, uh, protocol uh, derivatives from the first one, from the principal one. We're going to see what we've been deploying, the static the task run we're checking. The image used from Canico for the task, we, the Docker file used where it's with the path for the Docker file, and the registry used uh, at the image we're checking. And uh, this can all be verified again. You will see more private information at the end of this, I think. Now, the steps from the Docker file, very verbose. Of course, the digest of the image at the end of it. And this is mostly it, actually. And uh, again, uh, this is very simple to try for yourself and then implement your, uh, in, uh, your, uh, in your uh, uh, software lifecycle development to check when you add a new library for some kind of feature you need uh, in your final uh, project. And uh, I suggest you to try Tecton Chains out uh, because it can prevent a lot of issues happening uh, all the time, also in enterprise and uh, big companies. And uh, I think uh, I've been a bit too fast. So do you have any questions about it? Any comments, any correction too? Because uh, I feel uh, at the time it was a bit confusing, uh, especially when using cosine again for the attestation for the provenance. So if you need to come back there or if you have any doubt about this. All right. Thank you very much.